I mean, we coming from South Side of Chicago. You see black folks everywhere. You barely see white folks. And now and then we see them at the store or something. And you know, my grandma, um, my grandpa was like very well versed. Now I mean, very, uh, very well cultured. So we had friends, and they got friends from all different demographics. But nonetheless, I wasn't raised around white folks and Mexicans and all of that. It wasn't until I got out into the west, far west suburbs out there, weeding and shit with wasn't nothing but white folks. Man, let me tell you. I'm just hold it right there real quick. Let me go handle some business, I'll be back. What up world? It's your boy at nine and I'm back with another installment of Nine Millie Go Hard TV. It's another vlog session, y'all. Getting my day going. Um I just had a random little thought. I was thinking about how I've been having these videos going and stuff and I ain't really told y'all too much about my life. So I think that'll be a good vlog for session today while I go wash my car. Where to start? I guess we start at the beginning. Alright, so so the beginning starts with me being born. Edward Ratcliffe. Or actually Edward Norris Ratcliffe the second. Born Chicago, Illinois, 1983. So I was born in Chicago's Cook County Hospital. I'm from a city where they strapped all the time. All my niggas put their lives on the line. That's why I never turn my back on mine. From the low end and back to the nine. All my life I have to stay on the grind. Keep a full clip for these lame niggas. On entertain niggas. Working all night like a grave digger. Pops wasn't around the whole time. So mom spent a lot of time as a single as a single mother. Let me take this call out in a minute. So needless to say, mom had a little bit of um uh, she had some struggles as a single mother of two, um being a young mother at that. You know what I mean? So me and my sister spent a lot of time with my grandparents' house. Both of them, both on my mom's side and my dad's side. Um, most of my time was probably spent over in my dad's, uh, my dad's side of the family with my grandmother and grandfather there, where I went to school at Horse Man on Jeffrey, right, what's that, I want to say 80th, uh, our address was 8050 South Jeffrey, you feel me, but, uh, now my school was right across the street, went there for a nice little amount of time till mom got her shit together and she came back for us, uh, let me rewind, so, I went to uh, Horse Man, and then uh, we transferred to Foster Park. So over there, was, that was like off, off 87th Street. That's when we lived at 8728 South Marshfield. Um, so I spent all most of my childhood on the South Side until Moms came back and got us uh, with her boyfriend, you know, AKA Step Pops. They ain't never get married, but we call him Step Dad. I mean, he took care of us like as if we were his own to a certain extent. Um, and we moved from the city to to one of the western suburbs called Maywood. Maywood, a suburb of the west side of Chicago, but still mainly black. Now, I mean, it's a whole, it's a big time black area. Uh, so white white areas that surround it, but for the most part, Maywood is black. I don't know if it still is, but it was at that time. Went to school there for a little minute. I think I went to school. I think it was called Roosevelt. Went to Roosevelt for, I say, about a year or so. And I ended up getting suspended from Roosevelt. Well, there's a couple things I did. That's another story. Let me come back to that in a minute, y'all. Let me see what dust is. All right, so let me rewind. First time I got into a fight was in elementary school, but it was before I went to Maywood. We were still living in the city, and I was going to Horseman. And I don't know, I had to be, what, second grade or so. And one of the older kids at the school was fucking with me and some of my friends and shit as we was playing out in the schoolyard. This is when they still had recess. I don't know if they got recess no more, but uh, we was playing out in the schoolyard, 
the kids fucking with us, so I organized a group of us and we got back at them. I mean, we jumped them and shit. I got in trouble for that. We all got like an in school suspension for that. Um, so yeah, that was the first time I got into like a fight uh, with somebody older than me and shit. I knew I couldn't win, so I got a few other people to come along with me. And uh, yeah, we made that happen. <laughs> I forgot about that shit. But um, yeah, also went to Foster Park, got to some fights over there as well. But uh, then we went to May. Then we went to Maywood. Once I was in Maywood, all kind of bullshit that happened there. So let me fill you in after this little car wash. All right. So then we moved to Maywood. All right. In Maywood, I'm a little bit older now. I think <laughs> a little bit older. I think I'm in like third grade when we living in Maywood and shit. Well, at least I was in third grade when I first got suspended. Like, all the way from school. Not no in-school suspension. I like, out-of-school suspension. And that was because I took a knife to school. And I took a knife to school because this was in the 90s when um, In Living Color was still hot, if y'all remember that time. And uh, there was a character on there called Homie Decline. Long story short, there was an imposter, a poser as a um, child abductor dressed in the clown suit driving a van and um so like basically he was all on the news and shit you know telling parents to watch their kids kids don't go nowhere by themselves by ourselves and all that shit um because of this homie the clown was on the loose so i called myself protecting me and my sister because we had to walk to school we walked to school with other kids and shit but nonetheless alone you feel me um so i took a knife to school when the other kids told on me principal uh, got involved they suspended me in school but the principal um, ended up taking me home that day and had a sit down talk with my moms and shit basically all in all I didn't get in trouble but they had to make an example and shit no weapons all that but fuck all that man I ain't never gonna be no victim you feel me so I was all about protecting me and mine you feel me so um we were there for a few years oh actually Went to Roosevelt and then we transferred, my mom's transferred us to a Catholic school. What's trippy about that is we ain't even Catholic. But I guess she did that because it was like a better school, a, a better school in that school system. Uh, good move on her part because a few years after that, I'm sorry, the next year or so, I think we was in Maywood for a good two, three years. Um, after that, we moved further to the west suburbs moved on up you feel me to the white neighborhood basically <laughs> uh let me pick back up on that in a minute all right fam i'm back all right it's a new day you see i got some different clothes on see i got my peace shot peace sign shirt on peace to the gods peace to the earth all right so where i left off was at when we moved from the city to maywood out you know one of the west suburbs of chicago at that time is when we started in Taekwondo. So my mom got started in karate. She started doing karate when she was in high school. So before I was even born, um, she became a black belt and all of that. It made it to like second degree black belt before I was born. Um, so during that time, it was all about karate practice karate at the crib she was teaching me and the cousins and all of us karate techniques and self-defense and all of that when we moved to Maywood she joined a taekwondo school so that's where the taekwondo came in um I can't say she we joined the taekwondo school she went first got it all set up um and then end up taking me and my sister to the kids classes once everything was all set up um, at that time, she took off her karate black belt because she was not a uh, black belt in Taekwondo. She didn't know the forms and all they, all they, you know, ins and outs. Uh, culture, I should say. She didn't know the Taekwondo and the Korean culture. So she took off her black belt and out of respect. Like, this ain't my style. This ain't my system. Let me take it off. Um, they allowed her to and, you know, taught her. And eventually she was able to earn her black belt back. 
So um, she started helping with teaching the classes and everything there. But more importantly, she was bringing that shit home and we was practicing at the crib. So we would go to class, I'd go to my kids' class, she'd go to her adults' class, and then we'd go home and be practicing all that shit. Um, at that time is when she found out that she was kicking wrong for a lot of years. Hurting her toes and all kind of shit. Um, if you don't know, Taekwondo is all about, you know, perfection of, I can't say all about, but a big part of their system is their kicks, man. They have beautiful kicks and very effective kicking techniques. So that's where we pulled that from. Um, so we were there for a few years and after that we moved on up to the white neighborhood. This arguably is probably one of the most, I won't say influ influential times in my life, but it's definitely one of the most memorable times in my life. And that's because life was so different. Now, I mean, we coming from South Side of Chicago, you see black folks everywhere. You barely see white folks. And now and then we see them at the store or something. And you know, my grandma, um, and my grandpa was like very well versed. Now I mean, very, uh, very well cultured. So we had friends, and they got friends from all different demographics. But nonetheless, I wasn't raised around white folks and Mexicans and all of that. It wasn't until I got out into the west, far west suburbs out there, weeding and shit, where it wasn't nothing but white folks. Man, let me tell you. I'm just holding it right there real quick. Let me go handle some business. I'll be back.